All right, I have everything mapped out here. So I measure from where the frame rail ends to the first bolt, and that's 20 and a quarter to the center of the bolt. And then I measured from the center of this bolt to the center of the front bolt, and it's 15 inches. So we got all, that all mapped out. So I think, I believe this hole is still here on the GS. I believe the uh, the GS cross member is in the same position. It just has a shorter bolt. So that's why we need to swap that bolt out. And then I believe the front bolt for the GS is in this hole. Um, we'll find out when we get, uh, get under the GS. But I believe this hole should still be there on the GS. And we just need to drop the bolt in there. Um, but we'll find that all out when we get, uh, get going on the GS. But next, it's getting this gas tank off. And it's got a mounting point here, a mounting point here. I have to uh, disconnect the filler hose. And then uh, up front, there's a mounting point there and another one there. And we have to disconnect all the all the lines up in there. Um, yeah, all this stuff. So, but first we'll go we'll go inside, and uh, we'll go inside, and we'll disconnect the uh, you know the wiring and the hoses from the the fuel pump. And uh, I just got a, a message from uh, from John saying. He wants the, the fuel pump that's in there as well. So um, we'll pull that fuel pump out and, and give that to him. Uh, I don't know what's in there. He said there's a special fuel pump in there that he wants. So we'll pull that out for him. Uh, I got the brake lines off for him. And I think he wanted these, he wanted these struts too. They're, uh, uh, what are they, uh, GAB struts and then they've got a botch springs I believe where was it where did I see that yeah botch botchy so I think those are the only things he wanted off of this so that's fine I was re replacing all that stuff anyway so all right let's go inside all right the fuel pump is underneath this cover uh, which is underneath the back seats we already pulled them out, and it's just some Phillips screws. Alright, that should just lift up. Oh, nasty. So, uh, to get that up out of the way, I will disconnect. Uh, disconnect some of these lines here. Uh, we got to disconnect this electrical and we actually need the electrical. Uh, we don't need the plug, we just need the wiring. Um, so, or no, no, I got that back. <laughs> we need the plug, we don't need, we're only going to probably take off about an uh, inch, inch and a half of this wiring. And, uh, and then we have to cut off the connector for the the GS and wire in this plug to the uh, uh, to the GS wiring. Well, yeah, that's a better view. So uh, we'll go ahead, disconnect all these lines, disconnect the electrical, and I believe. Yeah, this other, let's see, this other electrical that comes out, it just runs underneath, and it goes around to, to this side, because since this uh, GSX has the drive shaft down the middle, um, the tank has a hump in it here, so it's got a, a, another pump over here to feed gas from this side, 
on over here. Oh, and also the GS, you know, on the GSX it has two openings. The GS it only has the one. Uh, so what I may end up doing, I'll put that, keep that plate on the GS, uh, and I'll cut out these holes um, in the GS if I can. I'll have to see if if uh, this is all still shaped the same. And then I'll use the same covers on it so you can still access the fuel pump without having to drop the, the fuel tank. Now it's, I don't believe it's something you necessarily have to do, but it just seems to me like it would be a lot better to actually have access up here to the fuel pump instead of needing to go through dropping the tank each time you uh, need to get in there for some reason. So, uh, then over here I took the, the cover off. I believe this hose and this electrical, they both just run through, and that is this hose and this electrical. So, we shouldn't have to disconnect those. We may actually, you know what, no. I think we'll still have to disconnect the electrical because that runs through and it, it ties into this wiring harness. Um, unless we want to just cut the wiring off up here and send it all down with the tank. Which we could. I mean, yeah, why not? We'll just do that. Um, so I'll just cut this wiring back, probably way back here, just so I got, you know, all the wiring. I might as well, right? Because this car ain't ever going to be used again. Oh, look at that. There's another dime down there. I'm telling you, I'm making money on this car. <laughs> All right. Let's get, let's get to work on this. All right, so lesson learned. Uh, <laughs> before you go unhooking these fuel lines, uh, take your gas cap off or, and, you know, purge the system somehow because... Uh, I pulled these hoses off and it shot gas everywhere. I have a, a nice river underneath the car of gas for now. But I don't know, this car sat for I don't know how many years. I think he said like three years it was sitting there. Or did it say since 2013 or I don't know. It's been several years sitting out there. It has no. Uh, uh, you know, no engine, there's no um, fuel injectors on the fuel rail. The fuel rail's still hanging in there, but, you know, so I figured there would be no pressure in here. But I pulled those off, and it just sprayed gas everywhere. So, you know, be careful of that. And another thing, I figured since this car was sitting for so long, it wouldn't have any gas in it, but... If you look in here, I don't know if you can see, it is completely full of gas all the way up to the top. So now I gotta figure out a way to drain all of this gas. <laughs> so this easy gas tank drop is turning into a uh, not so easy gas tank drop. But that's usually how it goes. So. I'll drain this gas and then we'll get back to work. Oh, another thing. I, you will have to disconnect the electrical because uh, somewhere in here it's attached to the to the body. Let's see, you can't. I have it disconnected on both sides and you can't pull it through. So um, and these hoses as well. They're uh, back about here it's connected to a hard line that's attached so we will have to disconnect the electrical and and the hoses for both sides uh, unless I can get underneath and see where they're attached and you know take them off but it might just be easier just to disconnect them and then drop the tank and then pull those down later but I went ahead and I cut the wires for the plug so that's good to go so scratch what I just said. 
underneath the car here looking at it this is the the fuel line that I disconnected up there uh, and it actually comes across ugh, and it, it is connected to the tank there and there and then it goes back up to the, the other side so actually you can leave those connected uh, the electrical I have it unplugged just hanging there it routes through the same uh, mounting points right there so you can leave that connected however this side I don't know if you can see hey yeah, you can't really see right there there's a white clip where the electrical is connected to the body I tried to undo it but of course the plastic clip just snapped off uh, so you will have to take uh, that clip off um, to bring the gas tank down the electrical will stay uh, with the gas tank there so uh, now it's time to take the gas tank down uh, first we'll take off this metal shield and so we have a bolt here um, you want to undo this one and not that one yet that one is the strap holding the whole tank up so we're just trying to get the shield off now so this one and that one and that one and this one and then those are the straps for the uh, for the actual tank uh, so we'll take that shield off and then we just need to disconnect the, the filler hose here and um, one thing with the filler hose is you need to use the filler hose for the year that your tank is I believe it was 95 to 97 I think that the tanks were the same and then 98 and 99 they're different the hose is different lengths so I'm not positive on those years um, I'll look I'll look it up and I'll put it right right down here right down here um, but just just to be safe get the filler hose for the year tank that you're gonna be using um, and uh, it'll all all fit together so for the filler hose since you know this car is a 95 and my GS is a 95 I'm just gonna disconnect it here and take this all down together and then on my GS you know I'll leave this part and just disconnect that hose so when I bring this tank up I just have to connect it here and it's just just this clamp and then that clamp there for the vent hose and it should come down we should be able to pull this down within a couple minutes Leave a couple threads in there until I get all of them. Get all of them loose. Just so it don't fall down on me. There's two more little ones here. Right there. And right there. Didn't even see those guys.
Dog, give me that pan. <laughs> something on the driver's side holding it up. There was actually one more hose I didn't see. Luckily it was uh, luckily it was really long so the tank still came down. But it looks like it connects right there next to the blue, that's the return line. Right there. Dude, it is so nasty under here. I'm getting completely covered in Spider webs. Ugh. Disgusting. Yeah, so this hose, it uh, was attached to the top of the, the top of the tank under the seats, so that's why I couldn't see it. Uh, it uh, came up through here, these clips, and attached to here. I'm assuming it's uh, something with the EVAP system. But see how much gas is still in that thing? Jesus. Alright, so that's all out. Now the next thing is gonna be to get get these bolts out. Alright ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if I am a terrible judge of time or this is just taking way longer than I had expected but I was hoping to have the gas tank down the rear subframe bolts out and the drive shaft brackets out in this video but this video is already 20 minutes long so I'm just gonna cut it here uh, maybe I need to stop being so detailed and show you guys like every single bolt to take out and things like that but I don't know we'll see I'll try to figure out ways to to speed it up without uh, losing the information uh, so you guys can follow along and and do this same same build if if you want to do it to your car um, so yeah the next video we will take out the, uh, the rear subframe bolts the drive shaft brackets and then we should be done with the GSX and we'll be able to start working on the GS which is where all the fun is going to start happening so if you want to check out that next video you can hit that link up here uh, you haven't seen the previous video where I took out the rear subframe, you can hit that link up here. And if you're enjoying the videos, you want to stay up to date with the build, maybe you'll hit that subscribe button down here. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next one.